All right, so we're doing lab 10 today, and that is Newton's second law of motion, where force is equal to mass times acceleration. So in this experiment, we're going to be using an air track. That's what this thing is here. So what an air track is, it has tiny holes along it, and we're going to turn on this pump. Hear it real quick. And that pump is causing the air to come through the holes. So what this is going to do is it's going to allow for less friction so that when this glider is on the track, it can move with ease. Okay, so we have the air track. We also have two timers set up, two sensors that are going to time the travel of the glider. Okay, so the two timers are set up 50 uh, centimeters apart. So the distance on your data table will remain at 50 for every trial. Okay, so the glider then is going to be placed on the air track and notice this glider has a rope attached to it, a little string here. At the end of the string, we're going to be attaching a little hanger. So this is where we're going to be applying that hanging mass. This hanging mass is going to change throughout the experiment. So you'll see on the data table um, that for each trial, the hanging mass will be increasing. Because what we're going to do is we're going to be taking these little hanging masses, so here's the masses, we're going to be taking them from these spots on the glider and adding them to the hanger. Okay. Now this hanger is going to be hanging over the edge here. So what this hanger, hanging mass is, is it's going to be the force that is going to pull this glider. Okay. So we're going to use the hanging mass to calculate the force. All right. So when I start this experiment, what I want is for this glider to be as close to my first gate as possible. Okay, that's just going to allow for less error. Once I turn the air on, the hanging mass is going to apply force. It's going to pull this glider so that it moves through both gates. When the glider moves through this first gate, it is going to start the timer. As it continues its journey and goes through the second gate, the timer will stop when it goes through the second. So that's going to be my T1 for my first trial. I am going to do that same trial with the same hanging mass three times so that I can get an average. Then for my next trials, this falls off quite often, what we're going to do is we're going to take another mass from the cart and put it on the hanger. So the reason for this, the reason we are taking masses from the cart and putting them on the hanger is we want the mass of the system to stay the same the entire time. So we have given you, in your data tables, the mass of the system. And that is the cart, the hanger, and all the weights that we are using. So this mass is staying constant because we are simply taking masses from one part of the system and putting the masses on a separate part of the system. Okay, so that's how we're keeping the mass constant. We are then going to use this data um, to do some calculations to figure out our calculated mass, our experimental mass, and apply that to the actual mass given to you. So let's do a trial and see how this works. So let me get my hanger. I kind of fell off on the floor here. So this would be the first trial. My two gates are 50 centimeters apart, or 0.5 meters. Okay, I have 7 grams on the hanging mass, 0 0.007. That's including the mass of the hanger itself. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and turn on the air. Hopefully it doesn't glide away on me. And so I want the glider as close to the first gate as possible before I let it go. When I let it go, since there's no friction anymore, that force on that hanging mass is going to pull the glider through both gates. So the timer starts when it goes through the first gate, and it stops when it goes through the second gate. So that is how I'm getting the time on my data table. I'll do that two more times, and then transfer mass. 